All right, well, welcome back. Um, we're going to start off with the same spaceship file that we were working on earlier, or if you want to do something um, of your own making, that's fine too. Just to have something that works, uh, something that's animated, so I still have this spaceship animated in this uh, in this file here, and it's about 300 frames of animation. So in this, in this um, video, what I want to go over is how to do a quick play blast um, to see exactly how your um, project looks at the actual frame rate that you've selected. So in other words, we're working with uh, three, uh, 30 frames per second in this file, and you can scrub the timeline to see what it looks like, but chances are you're probably not going to be able to hit 30 frames per second. And you can also play it in the playback controls over here, and it's going to do its best to play back at 30 frames per second. Now, this one probably is because it's a very simple um, file, f simple scene with just one object, but um, when you get to more complex things with lots of rigging and lots of other things going on in the scene, there's a good chance that it may slow down. Um, so the best way to test render um, an animation is to do a play blast. So that w that way it'll set up a movie file. Um, it's basically going to do um, just a sequential render of your viewport of your screen here, and um, and then you'll see it at 30 frames per second without actually having to wait for uh, a render. So it's not going to render your your lighting and your shadows and your reflective materials and things like that. All right, so starting off, in order to do this, we want to make sure there's a couple things uh, we have set up in here. So first, you want to make sure that um, the entire animation is seen um, in your viewport at one time, because we're not going to be able to um, move around or anything like that. So just you can scrub through, make sure that the, the ship doesn't go off the screen, and it looks like it's okay. I can probably zoom in a little bit more like that if you really want to and then just double check make sure it doesn't go too high oh, that's just right so we've got that now to set up the play blast go ahead and right click on the timeline down here and at the bottom of the pop-up list you'll see play blast so go ahead and hit the option box for that and we'll just set this up uh, the way we need so first of all go up here to edit and reset settings make sure it's at default um, and we've got the view that's what we want to uh, render out in format I normally will will set up a QT for a quick time um, and encoding we could leave that at PNG or if you want to choose something else from this you can animation uh, this basically doesn't have um, any compression um, <clears throat> let's see oh or h.264 if you're doing it with a movie file that usually works pretty well um, the default setting for quality is 70 percent so let's bump that up to 100 uh, percent this is uh, such a small file anyway it's not going to make that much of a difference uh, the display size um, now this is what um, the window size um, we could set it up in um, our render settings and tell it what exactly we want the resolution to be and then you could just choose from render settings but let's just leave it from the window at the moment and um, it defaults to a scale of 0.5 or 50 percent so no matter what you put in here if you don't change the scale um, it's going to render at half that size so let's change the scale to 1 so it's 100 percent we'll leave the frame padding at 4 because uh, we only have 300 frames so we only need four digits in there and um, we could just hit save to file and tell it where we want to save it um, browse here and give it a place to put it or we could just render it and then save it later so um, let's go ahead and say uh, render this so I'm gonna hit play blast and you'll see it runs through the animation and then once it's finished it'll put it together in the file type that you chose so here's my QuickTime movie and now you can see exactly how that render looks in terms of the speed and, and everything and it looks pretty good I'll go ahead and pause that. So if you wanted to render that um, 
to a file, again, just go back to your Play Blast render settings, and let's choose to a file, and I'll save it someplace. Okay, and you can see here I just put in a path name, and I'm calling it Spaceship uh, Play Blast, and hit Play Blast. It'll still render just like it did, but it'll save it into the, uh, the file that you choose, and it brings it up again. So that's a that's what a play blast is, and this is really just kind of a, a great way to see what your animation looks like in a raw format. So you're not adding any visual effects, you're not adding any post production or textures, um, and a lot of times this is how um, many employers will want to see your work um, if you're applying for animation jobs to see what's it look like in the in the actual uh, scene file. So when you're done, that's all you need to do. And um, the, I guess the other thing here is let's go ahead and show you uh, the render settings. So if there's a specific size you want to target, go to your render settings. And it doesn't matter with the Arnold. All, all that matters is if you go to Common. And we'll go down here to the actual size. So let's just, um, let's just choose something like 850, 854 by 480 just to show it as an example. And I'll hit close, and then if we go back to the Play Blast, we can choose um, from Render Settings instead, and it will ignore these things that you have in here, so then hit, uh, go ahead and hit Play Blast, and I'm going to overwrite that. So now you can see it's changed. No matter, it doesn't. Don't worry about it showing that quickly. That was just it going through the timeline very quickly on its first pass. So now this is what you really have. And there you go.